people and students of all sorts of ages would uh, often have a problem with trying to divide 792 by 24. Now, people of my generation were taught division um, in a way which is often not taught at all in secondary schools now, and that is um, using the method of long division. And unfortunately, you need to understand long division in order to look at the topic that we're going to cover here, which is the factor theorem and looking at dividing uh, in algebra with polynomials. Now, whether or not you remember the method seeing it once, who knows, but we'll, we need to show you what's going on. And you'll either say, oh yes, I've seen this before, or no, I've never seen it in my life. So 792 divided by 24. And just to help us, let's write down a bit of the 24 times table. 48, 72, 96. You'll see why we need that in a minute. OK, well, the method goes something like this. 24 into 7 doesn't go. Carry 7. Some people don't even put the carry 7 and... I don't particularly put it in for this. Now, 24 into 79 is the next pair of numbers. Well, if we look at our 24 times table, we can get down as far as 72. That's three times. What are three 24s? They're 72. Now, this is the bit that you won't have done before if you really have never done this method. You write what three times 24 is underneath and you subtract. 9 take away 2 is 7, 7 take away 7 is nothing. At this point, anything else that's left here is moved down. So we now have 72. And we focus on this. So 24 goes into 72, and of course we know that it's exactly Three. So the answer is 33. OK. So I'm now going to attempt to do a division in algebra. So I'm going to attempt to divide x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x plus 2 by x minus 2. I set out my bus stop and I put the function inside that I'm dividing into and the function outside that I'm dividing by. Now, I haven't got a, a digit that I'm divided into. I've got a power of x. And so I always focus on the front of each part. How many times does x go into x cubed? One loses count of the number of times people say 3, 2x, all sorts of weird and wonderful answers. The answer is x squared. Because x times x squared is x cubed. So how many times does x go into x cubed? The answer is x squared. Now remember what we did up here. We then multiplied that by that and we put this underneath. Well, I mustn't forget this. I just used the first bit to work on. So when I do the multiplying by this thing up here, I do the whole lot here by x squared. So x squared times x is x cubed x squared times minus 2 is minus 2x squared. What did I then do? I subtracted. So I'm going to subtract. Now again, oh dear, so many things can go wrong here. x cubed take away x cubed is nothing. 
2x squared take away negative 2x squared. How do I take away negative 2x squared? I add it. 2x squared add 2x squared is 4x squared. What did I do next? I looked at anything that was left here and I slid it down. So I put anything left there and bring it down. OK, start again. I'm now working at this level. So it's no longer x into x cubed, but it's now x into 4x squared, which goes 4x. Why? Because if I multiply 4x by x, I get 4x squared. 4x times negative 2 is minus 8x. Subtract. Careful again. Negative 9x take away negative 8x is negative 9x add 8x, which is negative x. Anything up here, I bring down. And finally, x into negative x is negative 1. Negative 1 times this is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is plus 2. Subtract. May have gone off the board. If it's not showing up, it comes to nothing. So, I have shown then that x minus 2 divides exactly into this. In other words, I have proved that this expression here is equal to x minus 2 times x squared plus 4x minus 1. So the first thing we need to learn in order to get towards this thing called the factor theorem is how to do this long division process. There are ways around it. Don't panic if you, if you don't like this. Um, there is a way around it, as, as I'll show you later. But the syllabus says very specifically that you have to know how to do this method. Now, the next question that we're going to answer is how did I spot, apart from the facts that I set the question, but how did I spot that x minus 2 did actually go into that expression? So now let's look at how we can work that out. OK, so we've cleaned the board. So let's just write down our function again. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x plus 2. OK, so how do I track down then that uh, one of the factors of that expression is x minus 2? Well, I try to find where uh, the function is 0. So where is function x 0? And I can do that totally systematically by just popping in numbers. So if I put x equal to 1, then I get 1 plus 2 minus 9 plus 2, which is negative 4. So that's no good. If I put 2, I get 8 plus 8 minus 18 plus 2, which is indeed 0. Well, that tells me quite a lot, because the fact that function 2 is 0 means that if I were to factorise that, one of my factors must be x minus 2, because in order to make the function 0, 
if I put x equal to 2 here, 2 minus 2 is 0. And so the whole expression would be 0, because I'm actually saying that this is x minus 2 times something, some f function, and that would enable me um, to do that factorising. So we have the factor theorem. And the factor theorem says that for a polynomial f of x, remember this is only to do with polynomials, if function a, so if I find some number, function a that makes it zero, and it's the good old rule that's the wrong way round. It means that x minus a is a factor. So therefore, x minus 2 is a factor of that. Now I said I'd show you a, another way of doing this division without using that long division process. So here we go. So I am saying that this function f of x can be written as x minus 2 times something. Now what do we know about that something? Well, we know quite a lot. Because if this is a cubic, then g of x must be a quadratic. Because a quadratic times a linear gives us a cubic. And I know loads of things about it, don't I? I know that this is x cubed at the front here, so if that's x, that has to be x squared, because x times x squared is x cubed. So what do I know about this number here? Yeah, you're right, it's plus 2. And I beg your pardon, the answer's got to be plus 2 if I multiply this by negative 2. And the only way we can get that is if that's negative 1. Now comes the tricky bit, perhaps. Now, you'd be pleased to know you don't have to worry about both of these. One of them will do. So we'll focus on the x squared part. The final answer has got to have t plus 2x squared. At the moment, I've only got minus 2x squared. So to get the answer of plus 2x squared, this must give me plus 4x squared, because plus 4x squared, take away 2x squared, is plus 2x squared. How can I get that? Well, if this end of my arc is x, then that end must be plus 4x. And so you can see I've got exactly the same answer as I had before. And so I'm now in a position to look at something else that they may have asked me uh, to do with this function. The exam situation, they might say, um, OK, solve function x equals 0 and sketch y equals function x. So at this stage, I've got my factors x minus 2, x squared plus 4x minus 1, and I want that to be equal to 0. So clearly x equals 2 is one solution. I then have my quadratic, complete the square, take away 4 and the other one. So x plus 2 squared equals 4 and 1 is 5. So therefore x plus 2 
equals plus or minus root 5, x equals minus 2 plus or minus root 5. And I've got my three solutions. So therefore, if I'm drawing the graph, I have a point there, which is 2. Now you have to think a little bit here, don't just put these crosses anywhere. What do we know about root 5? It's a little bit more than 2. So negative 2 plus root 5 will be this side and negative 2 minus root 5 will be that side. It's a cubic graph, it's a positive x cubed term, so therefore it must do that. The other way of getting it the correct way up is of course if you put x equal to 0, then y is negative 2 times negative 1, y is plus 2. So it has to go through 2 there. So there we've had the whole development of the factor theorem, the division, how we can cheat on the division a bit, how we can use it to solve equations and how we can sketch graphs. So there's a whole range of things comes out of this pretty simple concept, the factor theorem. Very useful. Okay, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.